Hi everyone and welcome back to Teaching Natural. My name's Dear. I'm a sixth year high school English teacher in SoCal or Southern California. And today's video is gonna be all about salary schedules, how teachers get paid, and how to read a salary schedule. So here we go. So here's the breakdown of this video. I'm gonna start with some specifications of terms and parameters, that way everybody has an equal understanding of what I'm talking about. Then I'm going to go into how to read a salary schedule and some of the things um, that go into how a teacher is paid, as well as clearing up some misconceptions on the way teachers are paid. And then finally, I'm going to use my own information to see where I would place on three different salary schedules. One from NorCal or Northern California, one from Central California, and then finally one from Southern California. So hopefully this video is helpful to you. So let's start off with defining some terms as well as parameters. First off, I live in California, and so California is one of the most expensive states as well as one of the most populous states. So that is going to um, kind of guide the way we are looking at salary schedules, but some of this should be pretty comparable to other states in the union. And even within California, there is a wide variety of salary ranges that you are going to see as I talk about Northern California, Southern California, as well as Central California, but hopefully most of this is universal. The next thing I want to specify is that I'll be looking at public school districts because I am a public school teacher. This is not going to include independent charter schools, nor is it going to include private schools when I'm talking about this data. However, some of this information might be useful to you if you are looking at an independent charter school or a private school, as well as I would always recommend looking at what the um, public school teachers are getting paid if you are someone who is gonna be bargaining for your salary. But from what I have seen of looking at private schools and independent charter schools, their salary schedules work pretty similar to public schools. The next parameter I wanna specify is that I'll be looking at unified school districts. And a unified school district is a school district that includes TK, sometimes called preschool, kindergarten, elementary schools, middle schools, which can sometimes be sixth through eighth grade and they can sometimes just be seventh and eighth grade, and then finally um, high schools, which is ninth through twelfth grade. A union school district or an elementary school district is a school district that only includes one or two levels of education. It doesn't include elementary and secondary education or some might call it primary and secondary education. Okay, so that's just something to be aware of as I look through salary schedules, and this could also affect the salary schedules where you live, depending on if it's a unified school district versus a union or an elementary school district. The next parameter or um, thing that you might not be aware of is that teachers don't negotiate their own salaries we are part of a teacher's union in the public school sector. And so our teacher's union negotiates our salary. This is something that is really different than other um, jobs or other careers. A lot of careers are able to negotiate their own salary based on market rate. However, for teachers in the public school district, if you are part of a union, then the union negotiates with the school district on our behalf to decide what we're all going to get paid. Whether someone pays union dues or not, the union sets our salary schedule. The next thing you're going to be seeing as I'm looking through salary schedules is going to be called certificated. And so that means that it's based on having a teacher certificate. In other states, this might be called a teaching license. So um, it is somebody who is a credentialed teacher. Um, that's a term I'm going to be using. Okay. So now let's talk about a salary schedule, how to read one, and how teacher salaries are determined on that schedule. There are two ways that teachers can earn more money. The first is going along the x-axis, looking at class. Class is the degrees a teacher holds, as well as their credential, and then the units beyond their bachelor's degree that they have that shows their continuous study within um, whatever their discipline is, or if they're trying to add a discipline, all of that, okay? So as we look at salary schedules, we'll be looking at the different classes a teacher can fall into. 
for some school districts, this might be starts at a bachelor's degree and then it'll go up based on their credential and then however many units they have post bachelor's. And for some districts, they might require a master's degree to move to a certain class, whereas other districts, the master's degree might have a stipend bonus, but they're looking more at the units. And then for doctorate degrees, that might depend on the school district, whether a doctorate is required to move up on a certain class versus just getting a stipend amount of, say, $1,000 for having a doctorate. The next way that a teacher can increase their salary is by step or along the y-axis, how many years they've been teaching as the teacher of record. And I want to be clear on that because teacher of record does not count the years that you have been a substitute teacher. It doesn't count the student teaching, the student teaching year. And um, if you have years as a long-term substitute, if you were not the teacher of record, most school districts will not count that as the years teaching. When school districts consider the years you've been teaching, that is typically 75% of the school year. And so certain districts will say it can be compartmentalized. So say if you switch school districts in the middle of the year, some school districts might honor that time that you taught in a previous school district while as other school districts on their salary schedule might say, no, you have to do 75% of the school year in that school district. So that's a really important distinction that you wanna make sure as you're looking for your own salary schedules, you're paying attention to that in these districts. The last thing looking at a salary schedule that I'm gonna specifically talk about is our contract is based on a certain number of dates. Typically, it is 187 days to about 180 days there in between for a certificated teacher. This is probably the biggest misconception about teaching is some people will say like, oh, well, teachers get the summer off. Yes, we are not paid for those days. We are paid only the contracted days that we work. And for most schools, that is... Um, a seven and a half hour day for, you know, however many days. And I'll get more into the specifics as we look at real examples of school districts. But yes, teachers are paid for about 50% of a calendar year. I think that's what 180 to 187 days works out as. So any work that we do outside of those 187 days it's not automatically paid to teachers. So teaching works with a lot of people working outside of their actual contracted hours within those 180 to 187 days of when they're actually working. And so a lot of teachers will choose to split their pay. So whatever they are paid on the salary schedule, they might ask their school district to reserve some of their check, split it into 12 months. That way, every single, every single month, they are getting a paycheck. Whereas some teachers will decide, no, I don't want the district to split my money into 12 months. I will take the 10 months or 11 months, however it works out, and I will personally save that money on their own. I do not have the... Uh, focus, the discipline, insert word here, to save the money on my own from my own paycheck, I know I will spend it immediately. So I opted for my district to do 12 month pay so that I got a steady consistent paycheck all the months in the year. If you want some more information about that, let me know in the comment section and I can make a separate video on um, how I asked my district to split up my pay why that works better for me and so on. But I wanna keep this video a bit more focused on reading salary schedules. Okay, so now that I have explained generally how to look at a salary schedule as well as some things to consider, I'm gonna talk about my specifics for salary placement and then we're going to look at three different salary placement schedules. Okay, so I have my bachelor's degree and then post back. I have 96 units. Within these 96 units, that includes my master's degree, my teaching 
<laughs> my teaching credential, as well as other classes that I have taken for professional development, as well as because I knew I wanted to um, increase on the salary schedule. So um, again, bachelor's, my credential, my master's degree, and then in total, that is 96 units. And then this year will be my sixth year teaching, okay? Um, so we cannot count my one year of credential program student teaching, so six years of teaching. We also cannot count my one year of teaching college. I have never seen that count towards my salary placement. It is typically, it has to be teaching high school. So that's six years. Okay, here we go. I just looked at the largest school districts in the state of California. I will have a link to the California Department of Education website where I found the, uh, I think it's like top 10 largest school districts as well as the top 10 smallest school districts. And then I looked, picked from that list, the largest in SoCal, the largest in Central California and the largest in NorCal. Okay, so the largest in Southern California, as well as the largest school district in California is the Los Angeles School District. The enrollment is 538,295 students. So that's the enrollment that is the largest. Uh, half a million students. Yeah, that's a huge school district. Okay, let's look at LA. LA has the years going along the x-axis and the, it says points. I'm going to guess that is units going along the y-axis. So LA does theirs a little bit differently. That's fun. Let's look at their stipulations. Is this including... Okay, so this is assuming that a teacher has to have a full credential. So LA does not allow a teacher who doesn't have a full credential, it looks like, to be teacher on record salary schedule. So I'm guessing if a teacher doesn't have their credential, they would have to have a sub license in order for that to work. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the six year column because I will be within my six year. And I have. 96 units total post back. So I would land right at this 26. I would need to take two units in order to get there. So working in LA Unified, I would start out at $72,630. Um, I'm not seeing the contract hours or the contract days. So we're gonna assume that it is 180 to 185 days. Okay, so that is not a bad salary. I'm gonna look in, I say that's not a bad salary. <laughs> Some things I'm taking into consideration are um, the fact that I have student loans as well as the fact of the cost of living in Southern California is higher. So some people you might be looking at and be like, what does she mean not a bad salary? Like that's fantastic. Yes, it is a good salary. But again, there are other considerations that I have to make living in California. So definitely not a bad salary. Um, if you would like me to do a video specifically on how I do my finances in California, um, I know that was a really popular teacher tag. Like I saw Megan Forbes from Too, School, Too Cool for Middle School do that. And then um, also LaTanya Robinson. I know she did that. So if you would like me to um, kind of look at my actual salary, obviously I wouldn't tell you what school district I worked with for safety reasons. But if you'd like to actually look at how I budget and how I manage my salary, student loans, all of that, let me know in the comment section. I think that'd be a pretty um, fun video to make. But okay, back to LA. So baseline $72,630. Obviously I would take two more units to get down to that 75,000. But let's go into their stipulations. And okay, so the master's degree, I would get an extra $584 for having my master's degree. So this district does not tie the units to having to have your master's degree. 
it is in addition to. So I have my trusty calculator here. We've got 72,630 plus 584. So I would be earning $73,214 in a school year for however long those contracted days are um, with LA Unified. If I ask them to divide that into a 12 month pay, I would be getting before taxes, because huh, we love those in California. I would be getting $6,101 and about 16, 17 cents a month prior to taxes if I worked in the LA school district. So pretty good. Um, that's not really far off from what I make now in the school district I am in, in Southern California. Okay, the next school district we're gonna look at is the largest in Central California, and that is Fresno Unified School District. So Fresno Unified School District's enrollment is 72,379 students. So big, but you can see the like massive drop from LA. And Fresno Unified is the third largest school district in California. So huge when you consider the entire state of California. So looking at their salary schedule, they have something in gray. So that means there's gonna be a stipulation there. Um, oh, they have some fine print at the bottom. All units earned beyond the bachelor's degree must be upper division or graduate courses. Okay, I'm gonna to have to do some math because I know some of my post back units are not upper division or graduate. Um, I took them because it was relevant to my subject matter. Okay, so let's do the math of my 96 units. Let's see. We've got 33 for my master's, 12 for my induction units, 39 units for my credential. Okay, so I have a total of 84 units post back that are also graduate level or upper division. So six years working in that column, I would be making whoo, 81,300 $77.21. That is, woo, all right, that is a great salary. Um, what does this gray say though? What's the stipulation for that? Okay, class five, placement is contingent upon completion of nine units of continual, uh, continual professional learning prior to the beginning of the new school year. Um, to remain in class nine, you must complete these nine every three years. Okay, so Fresno requires that you keep taking units in order to stay in that class. So I would have to talk to the district to see if I would have to already be employed. I think that's what it's saying, that you already have to be employed by the Fresno school district, but then you have to take continuous units to, for me to make that extra money on that part of the salary placement. Um, let's go in, let's see. Additions to placement on the basic salary schedule. Okay, they pay for having a master's and they pay an additional $1,000 for a master's. Holy Jiminy Cricket. So I would be making $82,377.21. So let's go ahead and divide that into what my paycheck would look like. 82377.21 divided by 12 months. My monthly salary before taxes would be six thousand eight hundred sixty-four dollars and about seventy seven cents. All right. And it does say that Fresno, that is a contract for 185 days and each day is eight hours. So now that we looked at Fresno and Central California, let's go ahead and look at the largest school district in NorCal or Northern California. 
And the largest school district is Elk Grove Unified School District. Their enrollment is 62,957 students. It is the fifth largest in the state of California. Okay, so their enrollment is not significantly far off from Fresno. So let's go ahead to Elk Grove and see how their teachers are making money. And just in case I didn't say this, since uh, teachers are state employees, we are public employees, anyone can find our salary schedule by just going to the school district's website and then just type in salary schedule, look for certificated. Um, it should be pretty similar. So anyone can see what a teacher makes. You just have to know how many units and degrees that teacher has, as well as how many years they've been teaching. Okay, so Elk Grove. There is a black dotted line. So I am guessing that some of that is going to depend on you have to be employed in the school district before you can be placed there. So let's see. Okay, Elk Grove has an option where you can do the bachelor's degree plus units or you can do bachelor's degree units and masters. Okay, so looking at six years, Let's go into the stipulations actually, so I can confirm my ideas. Okay, class placement. Teachers may not be placed on class G until they have earned the required units after contracted employment with the district. Okay, right, and then so G and H with Elk Grove Unified, you have to earn that after. All right, so I would be in class F and at six years, I would be making $70,462. Okay, so that was pretty similar to um, LA Unified. That wasn't radically different. So it's feeling like Fresno is an outlier there. Let us see. Okay, and then LA does not, or sorry, Elk Grove does not give an additional stipend for a master's degree you can just count it as part of your units okay so when i if i applied to Elk grove and if i was hired i would have to wow i'd have to do some work to move to g or h because i wouldn't be able to count a significant portion of my units wow okay so yes, you will be continuously learning if you apply to Elk Grove Unified because you do have to earn a lot more units post bachelor's degree slash master's degree after you have already been employed by the district. And then looking at H, you have to renew this every 10 years. Okay, so every 10 years to stay in class H, you would have to continue to take five units there. Haha, <laughs> almost ended the video without dividing up how much I would make in Elk Grove uh, per month. Whoops. Okay, so going back, the $70,462 divided by 12 months, before taxes, I would be bringing home $5,871.83 if I worked at Elk Grove Unified. So good salary, but lower than um, Fresno and lower than, what was the other one we looked at? <laughs> LA, sorry, LA. Lower than those with a lot more stipulations on how a teacher can move up to the salary schedule. So there that is. Let's go to the outro. Alrighty, so I hope that this was really helpful talking about salary schedules as well as using myself as an example with both my teaching experience as well as my units and my degrees. Uh, because when I started teaching, I had no clue how to read a salary schedule. I didn't even know how to find a salary schedule. So I hope that this was helpful to you. Again, if you want a video on 
um, how I personally use my salary and budget and some of the stipulations with my school district. Or if you want some other video of like, hey, do you think your master's degree was worth it? Let me know. I'll be happy to make some of those videos. Those might be fun and they might be unique on um, the platform so that you're not seeing, you know, the same thing that 50 million teachers have already done. But in the meantime and in between time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.